All right, so let's solve this problem. We have a three kilonewton drum. So that's the weight of the drum. It could be given in kilogram, but here it is a kilonewton. It's a little easier. And the center of gravity of the drum is located right here. And so we're thinking, oh, we'd have a weight applied at the center of the mass or center of gravity. And that downward force, that weight would be three kilonewton. It has uh, determined the horizontal and vertical components of the force acting at pin A. So we look at this pin. Right here is a pin at A. And uh, I look at it, and there's two different shaded members. Um, there's a, a darker shaded member that goes from E to A, and then it's kind of on the back side there, and then goes over to C and then back up. Do you see that? That's one member. It's, it's, it's connected with the pin to another a member which is lightly shaded. It starts at B, goes over to A, and then comes down to point D, and then goes back up. So we have only two members. This member, uh, let's call it um, E, A, C. So going from E to A to C. And then we have another member from, uh, what is this point right down here, B? Yeah, from B to A to D, B to A to D. So two members, EAC and BAD, and those two members are pin connected at A. Now, in the next problem that we're gonna look at today, there's gonna to be a pin and it's gonna connect three members, and that's gonna be more difficult. But it sure is a lot easier when I just have a pin connecting two members. Okay, now, uh, we are interested in the horizontal and vertical components of the force acting at pin A. Well, they're going to be equal and opposite between those two members. So what I would do is I'd say I'm going to be interested in solving for AX and AY, and here's the answers. That's an answer for the problem. And I would draw the free body diagram as best I can for member EAC. I'm going to try and draw it like this. Here's member EAC, and I'm going to try and draw a member uh, B, A, D, and I know I'm not going to do that good of a job, but there you go. Okay, and then I'm going to put in there, this is the location of uh, A, this is the location of A, and um, I think a little bit, of, because I don't like to deal with negative signs, I think a little bit about the other forces acting on the members. This is going to have my uh, P going upward, as shown right here chain connected at point E. And then down here at C is some action at C. And this is P A and this is A. And this is over here is B. And this over here is D. Okay, so that's C and D. All right. There's smooth pads at C and D. So we would have only the normal at C and likewise the normal at D. Uh, they're not, we know the directions of those normal forces on those members because uh, it's, it's not going to have like, it's not glued or cemented or, you know, it's, it's, it could freely come away from the drum at C and away from the drum at D. The contacts are going to be pushing on the drum in the positive X and the drum is going to be pushing back on the member in the negative X direction as shown on the free body diagrams. Okay. So now I can look at this and then I can look at A, the pin at A from the perspective of the member AEC. Does it look like the AX would be in the right or the AX would be toward the left? Which way does it look like the A positive direction for the AX would be? Looking at the pin at A on member EAC. Would it be this way or that way? It would be, it would be to the right. Why would it be at, at this location? This is A, pin A. Why would it be AX is positive to the right on member EAC? Because N sub C I deduced is positive in the negative X direction on that member. Yeah, yeah. And what's our load doing? Is it contributing anything in the X on member EAC? No, it's only positive up. Okay. Now, 
Let's say you would have just picked it to be AX in the opposite direction. Well, you would just get a negative answer, that's all. Okay. And then likewise, what about AY? Would AY be up or down on member EAC? Down. Yeah, it would. And so this would be, I'm going to um, call this uh, AY downward. Now that we deduced the direction of AX and AY from focusing on member EAC, we go to member BAD, and we have to be consistent. So right here, this I got the letter A in the wrong place there. Get that out of the way. So what do we have right here? We're going to have AY upwards. The same magnitude is opposite direction. And then this one is going to be my uh, AX. Maybe I should, it, I'm not making a big deal of the color coding. I'm just changing colors here. Make that a, this one a different color, that color, that color. Okay. Now, what about the B? Well, what did they say? Let me read it here. The grip at B on member DAB resists both horizontal and vertical components of the force at the rim of the drum. So it doesn't have just only a horizontal, it has a horizontal as well as a vertical component. If we look at it, what do you think B is going to do? Do you think uh, the BX will be in the positive X or in the BX will be in the negative X? That's a little harder to determine, isn't it? Maybe do this. Hmm. Come over and do a free body diagram of the drum. Maybe I'll try and fit the drum in here. D-R-U-M. We're going to have the weight down. We're going to have the normal force at C, the normal force at D, and then something up here happening at B. True? And from that, you deduce from B, that's the BX direction, isn't it? Some of the forces, just looking at it, some of the forces in the X, so that this would be the positive BX on my member BAD. Okay? And now what about BY? Um, on the drum, would BY be lifting it or pushing it down? I think BY has to be up on the drum, doesn't it? Which means that BY, to be consistent, is down on the member BAD. I pause. Do each of those, do we have three members, the drum, member EAC, and member BAD. Are their free body diagrams consistent? Do they look good? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause right now. And uh, we know what we're asked to solve for. We're asked to solve for AX. We're asked to solve for AY. We're asked to solve for the normal at C and then the normal at D. Uh, here I could have put N sub C and N sub D. Okay. So tell me, see if you can start solving for some of these. And I'll stop and walk around. Let me talk about it a little bit here. Um, did uh, anybody figure out from this illustration that the weight down was 3 kilonewton, hence uh, BY was 3 kilonewton up? Okay, that's helpful. Maybe come over here. If you did the sum of the moments about a particular point A on this member EAC, what does that allow you to get? It gets the normal at C, doesn't it? Right? Because this is um, this is three kilonewtons up, and so let me just write that equation. Do the sum of the moments about point A at this member EAC. We have uh, P going up at its moment arm distance. It's a little maybe not tricky, but you have to use your right triangle. Let me come back over here. I didn't put all the geometry on there. So what is that moment arm distance for P? Wouldn't that be the 600 millimeters times cosine of 30? Very good. 
that's my moment arm distance. And then that's making it want to rotate in the counterclockwise. And then uh, in the clockwise, the end sub C and its moment arm distance about point A is 120 millimeter. So we're able to solve for N sub C. And N sub C comes in at uh, 12.99 kilonewton. That was one of our unknowns that we were asked to solve for. So we'll go ahead and box that. Did that help you a little bit? Yes, sir. That's right. Um, they're only pin connected at A. That's exactly right. If the two members, EAC and BAD, were welded, we'd have a much different problem. But the system wouldn't lift very well. Yeah. Okay. They're just pin connected there. Okay. So now we could come back over to here. Oh, we now have this 12.99. True. Um, what could you do to solve for N sub D? How could you go to the drum and solve for N sub D knowing that N sub C is 12.99? Any suggestions? Some of the moments about B, point B. So if we said, okay, now we'll go over here, do some of the moments around point B on the drum equal to zero. Then we look and we say, okay, N sub C times its moment arm distance below point B, which is, uh, um, well, I've got to clean up my illustration a little here. So right here is B, right? A is a little above it. A is 60 millimeters above it. And then what is the distance um, to go to C? That's 60 millimeters down, isn't it? Is that okay? All right. And that makes it want to rotate in the uh, counterclockwise. And then uh, we have N sub D. And it's 60 plus 390. So what is that? 450 millimeters down and that also makes it want to rotate and we have the weight with a moment arm distance of and this one's a little tricky to get that moment arm distance it's half of the width of the drum but uh, you, you look at it and that horizontal was 600 millimeters times the cosine of 30 we've used that but we only want this part of it. So we have to subtract off 100 millimeters, this, um, this, this 100 millimeters shown right here. Does that make sense? So what we're doing? So that is going to be 600 millimeters times the cosine of 30 minus 100. And that weight is known. The weight was uh, 3 kilonewton, the, and the N sub C is known. Um, that's the 12.99 kilonewton. The only thing unknown is N sub D. And when you solve for N sub D, you find that it's 1.065 kilonewton. Let me pause and let a few of you run that on your calculator. Give me a thumbs up. We started with the drum, then we went to the member EAC, then we went back to the drum. So now we can go to member EAC or member BAD, and we can you know, solve for AX or AY. Um, somebody probably is chomping at the bit wanting to solve for AY over here using member EAC. How would you solve for AY using member EAC? Some of the forces in the Y. And what do we conclude? That on member EAC, that 3 is up with the P. P is 3 kilonewton load up. 
So Ay is 3 kilonewton downward. It is somebody else, probably a member EAC, wants to say, oh, what is AX? Twelve point is some of the forces in X, 12.99 kilonewton. I mean, we didn't even need to go back to the drum to get N sub D before we got AX and AY. We could have stayed in, on member EAC and gotten three of the four unknowns and then moved over to the drum and gotten the last one. All right, did we ever use BAD, member BAD, free body diagram? Not really. You can go in and check it, and it'll have, you know, do some of the forces of X, some of the forces of Y, some of the moments around any point, and it'll all be consistent. It needs to be consistent. You can use that to check your solution, but at this point, we're done. Okay?